All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, uh, I told you uh, I was going to take this um, M43 Spanish Mauser and try to do some cleanup on it using some number four aught. Uh, that's four zeros, steel wool, and some Vaseline. Uh, it's a method a lot of people use uh, clean off surface rust. Um, without further ado, we're going to get jump right into it. So um, here's our trigger slash magazine housing. Uh, notice. I did get a lot of this rust off, but what's left behind is slag and pitting. Only way to remove this slag is, I guess you could use an ultrasonic cleaner or electrolysis cleaner. Um, you know, you could also use a bench top grinder with a with a wire brushing wheel. Um, there's nothing I can do about the pitting. I mean, once it's there, it's there. I mean, this method's good for surface rust. It worked pretty well on the floor plate here, as you can see on the trigger guard. It cleaned up quite nicely. The other side of the mag housing cleaned up nicely. Um, overall, you know, like I said, there's not much I can do here. Is it going to affect the functionality of it? No, it's not. It's uh, just not the prettiest, but it is what it is. I didn't buy this thing to be a safe queen. I bought it to be a shooter. Um, I guess your uh, H uh, clamp or clip whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it cleaned up quite nice. I don't know why it's got all these dings. I'm guessing Hunter's Lodge did that. I don't really know. Um, but it cleaned up really nice. Nicer than I expected. Um, really pleased with that. Um, the other barrel band, I guess that's an H barrel band. Uh, the other barrel band, it already had some of these dings on here. Um, it does have some pitting on the inside. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Um, if it turned out okay, it's still going to work. Um, it's just not going to be the prettiest. Um, additional bayonet lug uh, that the Spanish, I guess, incorporated in their design. This cleaned up really nice. Uh, of course, it was kind of nice to begin with, um, but it looks really good. Pleased with that. Once again, don't know where all this crap came from. I didn't do that. Uh, your little retaining band, uh, it did have some pitting on it, but I don't think it's going to affect functionality. I did get it cleaned up pretty good. Um, anyway, a lot of this stuff still is going to require a good wipe down um, and oiling. Um, now, on to the barrel to action. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this bolt out of here just so I can maneuver this thing a little easier. Um, Alright, so there's a lot of pitting on this. Um, a lot of it I couldn't do anything about. Um, you'll notice back here on the right side of the receiver there's pitting, there's pitting. Right here on the tang there's pitting. Um, underneath a little bit of pitting. <laughs> Where um, I don't have it, I think I threw it away in a fit of rage. Um, there is a it's like a C clip uh, that screws in, oops, that screws into the bottom of the stock. Looks like it was resting right there. Um, that bet will actually this stock will show you a little better. Um, not not this stock. I'm sorry, it's not there. Not there. Um, I'm thinking the wrong side of the gun. Uh, top side should be rusted. I don't know why the bottom side's rusted. Can't tell you. Um, Unless it's got something to do with that. Right there. That's metal. Couldn't tell you what it is. Anyway, um, on to the pitting. Alright, so I'm getting sidetracked, I apologize. Um, cleaned up pretty good for the most part. Um, you know, inside of the action cleaned up really nice. Um, there's still a bunch of junk I gotta get out of here. So, I will say this, I tried to remove the rear sight post, um, don't cringe, yes I know, this looks really bad. Let me explain. I put multiple shots of PB Blaster in here and used an impact driver to try to break this loose, and this is the result of my efforts. I figured, well, this thing's on here so well, I'm just going to say, screw it and leave it, and I am until I find a better method. I know some of that, I think Croil, Croil, uh, penetrating 
uh, fluid may work on this I've not tried that yet I could also heat it up and try to get it out of here but it's not really hurting anything right now I mean you know this thing still works great you know when you set it down it still has a good positive flip from the spring in here as you just saw um, oh, I didn't show you this uh, above the crest a little bit of pitting nothing terrible nothing's gonna hurt functionality but anyway onto the side base um, you can see how bad it is here here some slag there for sure um, some on the underside some here, here, here. Um, and you guys, can, like I said, you can do what you want. You can take a you know, bench top grinder with a brushing wheel and probably clean this off. But you're going to expose bare metal. That's my cautionary note. Um, front side, you can see, still has some, some slag on it. I, can, I may try to go a little further on cleaning this. Um, so let's go on to the barrel. I'm just going to roll it so you guys can kind of see. different sections pretty good amount of pitting right there is it gonna hurt it no it's not deep enough um, you can see a little bit out here um, for the most part actually still got a little bit of cobble in there I didn't get um, I've not cleaned the barrel out yet um, but as you guys saw in the previous video it's got good strong rifling I'm not worried about it um, so that's that. Um, I did take this bolt apart. I cleaned it very well. Well, what I thought was very well. It may not be very well. Uh, anybody that's in the military, I don't profess to be the best at this. Um, but I did disassemble it, give it a good cleaning out, decent oiling. Uh, still need to go back and do a very thorough clean on it, but I wanted to get all the rust off of it that I could. Still looks really good. Um, got a little bit of minor pitting here, here some on your bowl handle on the knob there um, but I want to show you guys something about this and I'll put a I'll post a link in the description some people when they have uh, any sort of Mauser um, depending um, a lot of times they have issues with the safety um, with the engagement of it um, for instance it might be really hard once this is cocked gonna do it it's gonna be a pain <sighs> to engage that to flip it you know once you, once you get it past you know that first position it's it's fine and flipping it back isn't as bad either what it is and I'll post a video and you guys will see this uh, there's another youtuber out there uh, there's an engagement angle on this on this throw lever and you can basically file on it um, to change your change it. Now if you go too far obviously this thing's going to flip back and forth. It's not going to be good. It's going to be bad. Um, so cautionary note. Um, but when you have issues with this thing flipping like it's supposed to, uh, check out his video. Uh, he'll show you how to how to fix that. Uh, it's just a nice little fix just to, you know, so you're not hating your weapon. Um, you know, every time you want to put it on safety, take it off safety, whatever. Um, like I showed you last time, um, you know, the wonderful Hunter's Lodge repair here. I hate this. Makes me mad every time I look at it. Um, and I told you guys, you know, you know, they have these stocks at uh, Gun Parts Corp out of New York. Uh, it's also a lot of people call it Numrich, N-U-M-R-I-C-H. Um, I bought one. I paid about 50 bucks for it. Um, now, as you guys know, when I pulled that upper handguard off the original, you know, it just busted all the pieces. There's a huge crack here, and I was like, this sucks. So, went out on Gun Parts Corp and got me a stock. This stock, it, it looks... I don't know if it's new. Oh, it's not new old stock. Um, but it looks like it wasn't used much. You can see it's very grimy, very dirty. Actually, there's some old tape on there. Um, but there are no cracks in the stock. Now there's a few little gouges to here and there, you know, what you would expect out of an old stock. Sure, great, fine, I don't care, it's not going to bother me. Uh, butt plate looks good. There is one chip spot right here. Um, once I take this apart, I may glue that, press it, or clamp it, and then kind of sand it down. I'm going to refinish this anyway, most likely, um, depending on what I find once I clean this grime off. One other thing, um, oh, I didn't show you, it's got mold in it. <laughs> 
surprise. Um, but all in all, it's in great shape. Um, it just needs a lot of cleaning. It's really, really grimy dirty. Um, one thing I wanted to make note, and I'll also post a link uh, in the description on this. Um, Larry Potterfield with Midway USA did a good video a while back on, I think it was a rolling block rifle that had a really grimy, dirty stock, and it had a barrel on it that was originally finished in white. And he showed, short story long, I guess, he showed how you can clean all this grime off of a wood stock. It's very simple. Um, I believe it's uh, basically um, lacquer thinner that you'll use. And I'll do a video showing, you know, showing how this is done. And you'll use it to clean this thing off real good. And you can also go back and recoat it uh, with some boiled linseed oil. However you want to do it. You know, that's up to you guys. Um, anyway, the upper hand guard that I got with this stock um, is also in great shape. It's got a little bit of gouges in it. But it's not busted. It's not busted. It's not chipped back here. And it has that little retaining band that that's, you know, clips onto the top of the barrel. Um, there's a few little spots here. Um, I guess there's the beginning actually. I need to take that back. Beginning of a crack right there. It's not all the way through though. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Anyway, like I said, got that for 50 bucks. Midway USA. Now, I mean not Midway, I'm sorry. Uh, Gun Parts Corp. Um, I think they sold out of these. So, sorry guys, if you didn't get one, I guess you're out of luck. Um, I'll still have to take uh, my bayonet lug off of here and put it on here. You know, I'll probably show that in another video, no big deal. Um, but, you know, all in all, this is kind of how it turned out. I think it looked worse before, uh, definitely. Um, like I said, uh, probably do another follow up video on this. I may take the brushing wheel to certain areas on here. Um, definitely going to do one on this stock. Uh, show you guys how to clean that up. Um, so anyway, that's that. Uh, if you guys like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want. You know, that's perfectly fine. You know, I don't, I don't get any, you know, I don't get anything out of this. I just want to show you guys, you know, some tips and tricks on how you can take and restore some of these old rifles. Um, you know, just because you get one and it's, you know, rusted and got some pitting on, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Now, it's not going to be the most beautiful thing, but you know, it could still be a shooter. Uh, I mean, this one is a numbers matching one, well, other than the stock now. This one is a numbers matching M43 Spanish Mauser. Now, that's pretty desirable for most people. Uh, maybe not the fact that it's a Spanish Mauser, but the fact that it's numbers matching. Um, so anyway, um, like I said, just want to, you know, kind of share a little bit of the knowledge here, uh, pass along. You know, what you guys can do with these things. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take a brushing wheel, I think, to this. Yeah, I want to clean this up a little better. Um, no, this was just a quick and dirty. Um, I did this one night, you know, spent about an hour on it. Um, like I said, 4 aught steel wool, which is four zeros, Vaseline, and, you know, I showed you the motion, uh, how to do it. Um, if anybody has other techniques they want to share, by all means, um, uh, Put a comment down in the comment section. Uh, if you guys like it, hit the like button. Um, more videos to come. Um, hoping uh, also to do an unboxing of a K31, uh, a Swiss K31, you know, straight pull rifle um, that I just got from Centerfire Systems. Um, it's all about time and making these. Um, it does take time. Um, but anyway, I'll try to do that so you guys can see what that looks like and know what to expect if you order one from Centerfire Systems. Currently those are still for three hundred and ninety nine dollars. You know, kinda haven't seen prices like that for a little while. Um, so if you guys really want one, there's your chance. Um, but I'll do a video of the unboxing of that so you guys can see what to expect. Anyway, thanks for your time. You guys have a great day.